Art is about looking for questions and trying to find answers. It's about pushing yourself and pushing ideas. It's immensely important to be curious. The great problem in making art is this battle we all have between intuition and logic. And if one could only get back to the intelligent innocence of childhood, where one doesn't think too much, but simply does. Inspiration is a terrible word. I don't know whether I'm inspired. You start working. I think there is a strange compulsion to make marks on a flat surface. People have always wanted to make marks. It's a primal urge. So I find it necessary to make a mark. Being a soldier, whatever you do, is a terribly boring business for a lot of the time. Blokes find something to do. They usually play cards. I don't like playing cards. I find it boring, but I was able to sit there and draw them playing cards. So this is all much more fun for me. I used to draw my mates. I used to draw the local indigenous peoples. And after the war, I used to draw the Japanese people who would surrendered. I've always been in love with rainforest. I first met it during the war when I did a jungle warfare course in the south corner of Queensland, near the border of New South Wales. And during the war, I drew a lot of the local peoples. Inevitably, you're conscious of the fact that they decorate themselves a lot. They have tribal decorations. At least 10 years later, my wife and I were living in London, and I was trying to find something to paint. I found it difficult to paint the English landscape, although it was very beautiful. And we had a little black and white television set in those days. And there was a documentary shown one night of some bloke who'd been to New Guinea and made a film of the dancers at Mount Hargett. And inevitably, of course, they decorate themselves with their wonderful mud masks and fantastic headdresses made out of birds, feathers, wonderful costumes made out of anything you can think of. It was just so exciting. I thought, well, this is the sort of thing, uh, well, I, when I found that I couldn't paint London or, or the landscape, I'd started painting my memories of New Guinea. I wrote to the BBC, and I probably said something silly like, um, I'm a young Australian painter in London painting my memories of New Guinea, and could I buy some of your still photographs? And I got a ring on the phone about 10 days later from some bloke who said he wondered if he might be able to help and he introduced himself over the phone. He said he had a lot of photographs and he said his name was David Attenborough and would I like to come around for a drink? So I went around for a drink and he lent me a lot of photographs and then I invited him and his wife around to our flat and showed him the work and asked him to take one if he wanted to. I gave him his photographs back because he didn't want to sell them or leave them with me. I let him have them back and uh, he took a painting in return for uh, very happy about that. And uh, by chance, only a couple of years ago, I was watching a show by Andrew Denton, and he'd been interviewing David Attenborough. And I was particularly fascinated, of course, because some of the film was done in his living room, and there on the wall behind him was my painting. So I thought a man of great taste and discretion, he'd actually got my painting on the wall. It was a release after the war. Um, I mean, everybody wanted to forget the war. Every artist wanted to get back into what they wanted to do, and they wanted to get back into it early, and if possible, I guess, make a name for themselves. And in the art scene, everybody, the commercial galleries were showing again, all the Europeans were beginning to show in London again, the Germans, the French, the Dutch um, were beginning to show in the London galleries. The Americans were beginning to show the first of the abstract expressionist paintings were showing in London. And it was a tremendously exciting period. The critic on the Herald at the time, I think it was Terence Maloon, who's in Canberra now, head of the, looking after the drill hall in Canberra. And Terence in his review said, it was not so much a painting of a friend as a painting of friendship. And I thought that was a wonderfully perceptive comment. I think I was enormously flattered, to be perfectly honest. My formal education was not all that sound. I left school at 14 because of the depth of the depression and think that at 14 I could end up with 
two honorary doctorates is something that I find quite astonishing. Barry Pierce, who is the head curator at Art Gallery of New South Wales, and it was his idea. I asked him if he'd mind coming out and helping me go through some old work and help me to chuck out old work that I didn't think was any good. And he got excited about the old work and said for the first time he could see where I came from. He could see the visual and conceptual connections between work of 60 years ago and of today. So he organised the show uh, at the S.H. Irvin Gallery and by sheer, sheer good fortune, the only date they had available was the date of my 95th birthday. So it was the greatest birthday, 95th birthday bash you have ever seen. You know, one is always surprised, astonished that one can live that long. I would have, so I was delighted still to be alive and delighted to be able still to have a show at a major gallery like that, which is a beautiful, beautiful gallery. There was old work and new work, and some of the works I hadn't seen for 50 or 60 years, so it was a surprise and a delight to me to see them. And I must say, I thought some of them were a damn sight better than I remembered.